Hi, you're through to James Eager here from Metropolis Productions in the UK. I'm going to take you through the Ableton Live set that we use to uh, run our multi-channel playback with our party band Metropolis. Um, the first thing that you should already know from watching the previous videos is that we use a Moto 828 to, uh, as our audio interface. Um, to this, we run an eight-channel patch, okay? The, and basically, this eight-channel patch more or less dictates pretty much the whole of the template. So I'm going to take you through what's in the eight-channel patch, okay? So channels one and two are stereo percussion. Channels three and four are stereo keyboards. Channels five and six, stereo backing vocals. Channel seven is a mono effect or guitar. And channel eight is the click track or Q uh, channel. Um, there are plenty of other uh, patches which we've discussed which could work for this, but this seems to be the best one and cover a bunch of different styles that we play within the band. Okay, so I'm going to show you how this actually is set up. The first thing I'm going to draw your attention to over here are the subgroups. Okay, these are ordinary Ableton channels. And, uh, those of you familiar with Ableton will know the beauty of it is that you can route an absolutely anything anywhere. So these are ordinary audio channels which are operators are subgroups. Um, so we have five subgroups across here. We have the percussion, we have the keyboards, we have the backing vocals, we have the effects, and we have the um, click or cues group. Okay, if you look down here, um, we actually aren't outputting on these. These are going to the sends, uh, which then gives us some more flexible routing, which I'll show you now. Okay, so I'm going to open up the sends here, and I'm also going to open up the returns over here on the right hand side. Here they go. Okay. So if I go over to the uh, sends and returns, we will see uh, we have our main output here. This is the output that I use in the studio when I'm uh, setting up the live set or on headphones. And then we have the analog outputs here, which are on the 828, which are 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 here. And then we also have the ADAT outputs, which are the digital outputs, which we use a lot here uh, on through 15 through to 22. Um, with the ADAT outputs, the output is a lot, lot hotter than the analog. So what we can do here is we've actually attenuated these down to minus 12 dB uh, just to give the, the engineer a little bit more um, headroom uh, on the desk. Basically, this is all preset. I don't look at it really from day to day. And it just close it down and it sits there and works behind the scenes. So take that away. If we go across the sends, you can see here all the various different routing that I've set up to uh, send from the groups over, over to uh, into into the returns. Last thing I'll draw your attention to is on these particular groups. I've also just put a little bit of limiting on the top so it won't go. The output won't go above 0 dB. Um, if we go to the FX group, I've just put a, a plug in to make it into mono. So any stereo signals, you'll get both sides. And the same goes again on the click and the cue group here. Going over to the actual live set now, um, here are the channels. Here are the various channels that I've chosen to use. Um, we have here a cues track, a looptimus patch track, and a click track. These are kind of what I think of as the control tracks. In here are the audio cues which go to the band. Uh, so in the in-ear monitors, that's the one, two, three, four, which sits there. Also our follow, follow plugin sits on this track here, as you can see down the bottom. We have our Lutimus patching here, which is the foot pedal that I use to control this. This is just pure, uh, just a pure visual reminder of where things are patched. And then we have the click track here, which is our metronome. Um, I tend, I've set up my own metronome because it's much, much more flexible um, in terms of the sounds that we can use and also the routing that we can use, um, so where we send the metronome, so uh, rather than using the internal Ableton metronome. Here we have our various channels. We have the percussion, which is self-explanatory. We have the backing vocals. Um, we have three keyboards, um, two keyboard tracks that we use live, and then what we call the mute keyboards, uh, which is a, a set of keyboard parts that we just have in reserve in case uh, something happened to our keyboard player, for instance, because uh, we normally run those live. But they're there if we're there, and they're just muted. If we need to unmute them, all we do is that, and they are always there working. We have a bass track for any synth bass uh, that we might use. We also have uh, electric drum channel here, so any synth drum loops or whatever which need to run in the background. 
guitar here, self-explanatory, and the effects channel for all wishes um, and swishes, which you have in a lot of pop music these days. I'm going to show you this in action. I'll show you uh, this so you can just hear the routing on Crazy in Love. So if I start this off here, okay, let's start this up. Straight in, as you can hear. And we'll go over to the percussion group. Let's solo the percussion. There we go. And the keyboard's there. Okay. There the BVs. And then the guitar channel here. Intro, two, three. And then you can hear the metronome First, and, some, two, three, and there's a count. Four. Okay, this is a very, very flexible way of working. And the reason we work this way, in case you're not sure, is it gives our engineer much, much con more control over the levels um, of, uh, of all the various different parts. He can really mix it in with the band and get it sounding natural. So much, much more, fle much, much more flexible way of doing it. Um, we believe in incredibly improves our audio quality and gets the band sounding bigger and more natural than if you had it just mixed into a mono file. Um, also, what sometimes sounds good in the studio may not necessarily sound good live. So I'm sure you can see the flexibility is absolutely is is vastly bigger using this system. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this system. Please do watch the other couple of videos which we've made at this point, which will give you um, more information about the Ableton Live setup that we use. If you've enjoyed this, please uh, share this around Facebook and Twitter. Um, or any questions, you're welcome to email me. Hope you've enjoyed it, and see you next time. Many thanks. Bye-bye.